it's Rocky and I'm back again with another episode of Hustle Capsule. Let's go ahead and start. I got lost. I didn't end up painting anything, but it was a nice walk. As I head home, I get this distinct feeling of being followed. I didn't really know that was a thing that actually happens, but it's hard not to notice when you see some movement out of the corner of your eye. I turn around, and a sleek black cat stands in the middle of the road. It sits down when we make eye contact and thumps its tail testily against the pavement. It's got different colored eyes. I guess heterochromia really is pretty common in cats, huh? Should I, like, try to bring it to the cafe? They take care of strays there, after all. I should try. I crouch down as slowly as I can and reach my hand towards the cat, beckoning to it. It doesn't move. I make those little smooshy noises that seem to work on some cats. This one doesn't seem terribly impressed. It pins its ears back and looks away, still for a moment, before standing up and slinking into the alley. I should just leave this to the professionals. to celebrate. I'm gonna wreck this pizza I grabbed from Pizza Lloyd's on the way home. I picked up a can of wet cat food for Mochi from the corner store, too. I figure we both deserve a celebration. Mochi! Get your fat lump out here! I have good news! No answer or indication that he's even in the same room. You know, he never even asks how my day was. I know how to do this. I walk over to his food bowl and crack the lid of the wet food. In a flash, he's at my feet, tail shaking like a rotor behind me. Come here, you big moron. I give him a little scratch behind the ears before I dump half the can into his bowl and the feeding frenzy begins. He acts like I never feed him. Whatever, I'm about to go do the same to this pizza. After a quick jaunt to free myself from the shackles of non-pajama clothing, I flop back down on the couch. Dinner in hand, laptop in my face. Oh! It looks like there's a new jelly donut video. It's a video of her sleeping in a donut box. I love that dumb internet cat. She's always doing something ridiculous. I wonder how her owner gets her to do these tricks. That flooring seems familiar. Where are these filmed? I spend the rest of the evening picking through the video archives. I can feel myself sinking into the bread dough couch cushions. Wow! It's so early. What's his problem? Wow! I bet he just wants the other half of the wet food. That's why I don't get it for him that often. I excavate myself from the couch and do what I can to mitigate the bedhead situation I have going on. What time is it anyway? I grab my phone to check. 7.40? Ah, hell. I'm gonna be late for my first day of work. I take the world's fastest shower, but there's no time to dry my hair. I'll have to hope that I run fast enough that the wind resistance will do the job for me. No time to sort through my duffel. I'm just gonna have to throw on whatever looks cleanest. It's not like Graves said anything about a dress code, so whatever. Mochi trails me closely, howling more and more insistently along the way. It's like he doesn't care about my punctuality at all. No time to mix the wet food the way he likes it. I dump a scoop of kibble into the bowl on my way out the door. I haven't seen a cat so offended since the one that watched me mess up my coffee. Uh, they can both deal with it. I can't believe I'm almost late to my first day of work. Had the first job, even. What a great first impression to leave. Thanks for hiring me, Avery the Flake. I start out in a full sprint to the cafe, but it's only about a 10 minute walk, so it looks like it might not be as bad as I thought. If I run, I can make it in less time. Here it is, a cat's paw. I got a good look at it when I was here yesterday, but it feels totally different when it's your workplace, you know? It's kind of nice to think about. Hey, Avery! Landry peeks his head out from the door frame and waves me in. 
Aw, look at all these people. I'm surprised by how many people are standing around. Graves, Landry, and Hayes are there, but so are a few others that I've never seen. I only see a few cats right now, but they seem utterly disinterested in everything we're doing. They're all piled in a sleep cluster by the window. I feel a little embarrassed that I'm so disheveled, but I'd rather be on time with wet hair than late and looking perfect. Good. You've decided to challenge the morning sun after all. Now that the star is here, we can start the show. Still as weird as yesterday, I see. Cut another sucker boss? That's esteemed co-worker to you, Reese. You just keep collecting these strays. Uh, before we get too far, everybody should introduce themselves to Avery. Avery, we've already met, and you already know Graves. Did you meet Hayes yesterday? Briefly. Hello, Hayes. Uh, hello. He looks like he's going to try and slip between the cracks in the tile. How does a guy like this handle a job that deals with people? Hayes is a great barista. He's a great help in the kitchen, but likes to spend a lot of time, a lot of his time with the cats too. Hayes flashes me a quick look. The side of his mouth upturns ever so slightly, like he's trying to smile, but he's out of practice. I reach out to shake his hand. He's practically bracing for impact. Before I reach him, a bright light flashes at the corner of my vision. What? Is that a camera? Oh, I'm sorry, sweetie. I thought I turned the flash off. I whip my head to the other side of the lineup. The girl on the end is aiming her phone directly at me. Sorry, don't mind me. I just want to commemorate our new employee. I'm Finley, and I take care of social media. I like candids, so I'll try again later when you've forgotten about it. Finley is also... Graves! I know what you're going to say! Don't ruin the surprise! Graves lets out a soft bark of a laugh. Alright, alright. You tell Avery whenever you're ready. Thank you! The two in the middle of the lineup look beyond impressed. One is the smart-mouthed guy, Reese. And the other looks like someone I wouldn't want to mess with. Finley puts her hand on the shoulders of the tough-looking woman standing next to her. Since she's not going to introduce herself, this is Mason. She's our head chef. Or our only chef, I guess. Hmm. Well, uh, nice to meet you both. Yeah. Finley reaches up and places her head against the back of Mason's head. She pushes her hand forward and fo forces Mason to nod. I'm amazed Mason is putting up with this. Wow, there's the, that's the most you've spoken all day. She likes you already, Avery. Mason makes a quick little noise that could either be a laugh or a grunt. Maybe it was both? How kind of you all to save the best for last. I'm Reese, and I'm the one that you'll be answering to after Graves, so you better stay on my good side. I would have sworn Landry was second in command here, so I don't know what this kid's talking about. I didn't even see him at all during the interview yesterday. I'm on cat detail today, but don't think that means that I won't be keeping an eye on you. Cat detail must mean taking care of the cats. Obviously. I'm learning quickly. I don't know why the second in command would be so eager about telling me he's gonna clean litter boxes all day. Maybe it's a weird status thing here. Ew. Uh, I'll be on my best behavior then, I guess. Good. Okay, that should be everyone then. Avery, you'll be training with me today. I hope that's okay. That's fine with me. It looks like I'm no longer needed. I have other work to do. You know where to find me. Graves slinks to the back of the cafe. I think I hear footsteps on creaky stairs. Mason and Hayes disappear after him. Avery, did you have breakfast? We're going to have something to eat before work if you'd like to join us. It's tradition. Oh, that sounds great. I fed my cat, but I forgot to feed myself. Reese has already seated himself in the long booth, seating along the wall. 
He scoops two of the tables together, and Landry pulls over another chair. Great! Just sit and relax. Mason's just finishing up breakfast. I move to take a seat, but Finley blocks my path. Avery, before you sit down, I have a question for you. Sure, what's up? Okay, is that... Her voice drops almost conspiratorially. She leans into whisper. That's an Ikea shirt, isn't it? He's my favorite, too. A what? Ikea! From Blast Zone? From what? Look, you don't have to play dumb. I get it. No, I really have no idea what that is. Is that like a show? Is it a shirt from something? Oh, um, no. Never mind, don't worry about it. Now you've got my interest, I just thought the shirt was cool. Uh, well, you've got my interest now, I want to know what this IKEA thing is. But now you've got my interest. What is Blast Zone? I don't know if it would be your type of game after all. Oh, it's a game. I like games. Try me. Well, it's a story about men's passions clashing in a life or death struggle. Ooh, sounds dangerous. Oh, it is! But it's also romantic. Romantic? Like, love blooming onto the battlefield? That type of thing? Yeah, I think you do get it. Maybe I'll lend it to you sometime. If you prove yourself worthy. I'm not really sure what that involves, but sure. Okay. She gives me a grin and a wink and takes a seat at the table next to Reese. I noticed that somebody set the table while I was talking to Finley. Mason and Hayes should be out in a minute, Avery. Come sit down. Sure. Where should I sit, though? What if there's some unspoken rules about this sort of thing in placing? You never know with new groups. Landry answers the conundrum for me by beckoning to the seat between him and Finley. Quietly, I take the seat. Mason emerges from the back with a large tray balanced atop with each hand. One tray has a giant stack of French toast, and the other is some kind of egg thing. I'm not sure, but it looks amazing. Whoa. Hey, I had no idea how hungry I was until just now. She sets the trays down in front of us and then returns to the kitchen. I hope she gets back soon, because I'm about to be on that egg thing like mochi on wet food. Mason returns a few moments later, cradling six empty coffee cups in her arms. Hayes follows in tow, carefully balancing a carafe full of coffee. They set the cups and carafe on the table and take their seats. Hayes' butt barely hits the chair before the others start to dig in. <laughs> I'm a little afraid that I'll lose my hand in the fray if I try to jump in now, but I'm so hungry. Landry reaches out an arm from behind a fortress of French toast slices. He lightly bats at Reese's hand as it reaches for the syrup pitcher. Save some for Avery. Jeez, calm down. You're the one stealing all the food. I haven't taken any more than usual. Breakfast is important. While everybody shouts and chatters across the table, I help myself to a bit of everything. I'm not used to eating a real breakfast, especially one that didn't come out of a microwave, so I'm going to savor this. Wow, this is amazing! Mason, what is this egg thing? Mason's eyebrows shoot up. She looks at me like I grew another nose. Frittata. Is that like a souffle? It looks like it'd be really hard to make. Just eggs and vegetables in a pan. Still, I know I wouldn't be able to make anything like that. It's really nice to have a real breakfast. What do you usually eat, Avery? Mostly cold pizza, or toaster tarts, I guess. If I remember to get them. Mason glares like I just knocked her plate on the floor. She stares directly at me, through me, with a hard look in her eyes. You eat here now. Always. Uh... Can I still have pizza sometimes? Not for breakfast. Ever. I can hear Finley and Reese snickering. 
Okay, but other times are still okay, right? Mason rolls her eyes and goes back to her coffee. Reese stares up at me between bites of French toast. Avery, when we're done, we need to talk about dress code. Oh, Reese, don't start this again. Shh, it's an important part of a new employee orientation. Landry passes a positively pained look at Reese. He glances at me, but a poke to the ribs from Finley sends him staring back at his plate. Landry, you're such a mama bird sometimes. Lighten up. Avery, look at this place. We take our visual presentation very seriously here. Mason gives another grunt. Hayes places his empty plate and cup on Mason's plate, and then takes the stack into the back with the urgency of a tactical retreat. Graves and I expect a certain level of decor with the wait staff. Is this about my outfit? I woke up a little late, so... No, this is about uniforms. Mason pushes her chair away from the table with enough force that it wobbles briefly on two legs. She stands and takes my plate in one fell swoop. Opening soon. Time to get ready. She picks up the now empty cast iron skillet with one hand and balances a few of the other plates on top. That looks heavy, but she's holding it like it's nothing. Come on. She stares me down and gestures to the back door with a head nod before she heads into the kitchen. Don't think you can run off so easily, Avery. You'll get written up if you don't have your uniform. Um, alright, well, um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, end this episode here for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos from me, then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.